So this is the ideal render pass breakdown. So all the passes that we run in post-processing with image-based lighting, all of them blended in together to give you the final result. So this is the scene that we get after running real-time lights. So real-time lights are done. We're not interested in them. So that's why you can see the sunlight. You can see a couple of local lights. But the whole scene is still lacking environmental reflections. So what we do now? We first calculate our unbind BRDF that you already know. The unbind BRDF is the way how we calculate this, this like special BRDF for QMAPs. I already showed you before. This is how we call that. Um, as you can see, there are not many uh, colored metals in the scene. It's mostly monochromatic, not too many, uh, well, actually interesting metals, to be honest. But you can clearly see how the Fresnel kicks in, how the visibility factor kicks in. If you actually analyze all the maps that I showed you before, you can see that in this image pretty clearly. Then we, do, we run the, the localized cube map pass. I mean, this is actually not in the right order, because first we run real-time reflections, but for the sake of this breakdown, it makes a bit more sense to show it from this angle. So you've got the result of all your cube maps, localized cube maps, and the sky dome. So we multiply this over by our unbind BRDF factor, and we slap it on top of our previous buffer, and we end up with this. So this is already starting to look quite nice. It's not very well grounded. You can see uh, light leakage problems here, light leakage problems near the character, and also the characters, they don't reflect in water bubbles, which will be really, really handy and nice to have. So we run our real-time reflections. This is the buffer you get after the ray trace pass. Uh, the ray trace pass right now runs in half resolution, I guess. Um, it's actually doing some upsampling, so it's fair to say it's actually doing like a full screen ray trace pass right now. It's obviously uh, distance roughness dependent because we follow the BRDF based on those important sampling uh, counts. So you can see that reflections farther away are more blurry, objects close by are a bit sharper. I think it's really nice to look at that here because you've got a guy standing here and there's kind of like a sharper silhouette coming through and with the distance of the reflection it blurs away. You can really see that on the coverage mask. So this is the coverage mask. This is the mask that tells us how many samples from the ray trace actually were part of the integral that I was talking about previously. So we use this mask to blend over real-time reflections to the previous buffer. And this is, the, this is our buffer before the blend. This is our buffer before all happening. And here you can see the, uh, where was that, sorry. Yes, so this is the final composite. So you can see that we've got the bounce of light coming here from the ground. You can see the real-time reflections of those guys also. And everything is really nicely grounded. So this is like the main difference that you get before image lighting pass and after image lighting pass. You can also see that bounces of the sunlight are also taken in consideration because we run the ray trace pass after the, the lighting pass. So if you want to have a reflection of the reflection of your sunlight, it's going to happen. We also have some trickery to actually have double bounces of our reflections. So we can get multiple reflection bounces in our game. <laughs>